Hi, I'm Matt and this is Not Enough Tech. Today we're going to talk about Sono Basic R3, we're going to look inside the devices and talk about the latest Sono R3 Zigbee. So if you're not aware, Sono released a new iteration of their Sono Basics and they called R3 and they look like this. Now if you're not impressed with the enclosure because they all look the same, uh, you're not the only one. I actually had to mark each Sono with a uh, different designation with the marker pen because it's very hard to tell which one is which, apart from the model number at the back. Now because they look alike, uh, you will have to actually look inside to figure out which Sono you have. So that's what we're going to do. Now R3 design of Sono Basics comes with a couple of things. First of all, the module itself it's redesigned, so it has uh, it has module design inside, and it consists of two elements. There is a relay board, and there is also a connectivity module that uh, supplies the connectivity, like a Wi-Fi, RF, or in the latest one, Zigbee. Another thing that uh, uh, Son of R3 has that uh, s makes it stand out from a different Son of devices is DIY mode. And there is a small jumper that you can utilize to actually enter DA DIY mode and uh, use it. Now, if you want to know more about the DIY mode, I cover it in this video there. So click on this and you'll learn about its shortcomings. So let's open these up and let's talk about the differences between each device itself. This is Sono Basic R3 equipped with relay that is capable of 10 amps. The chip is ESP8285 and you can see four different dev paths available to program it. Now this is split into two modules and this, the relay board shows uh, that there's some IC missing which means they're going to use the same PCB across all devices. Both modules are connected with two uh, by four headers. The RF version of this uh, is slightly different. You'll see that the relay part of this board has actually RF components on the relay part, so you can technically um, control this with, uh, without using ESP. The board itself for the connectivity is exactly the same as on Son of Basic R3. Lastly, this is a Zigbee version of it and it has completely different connectivity module. And the relay module is exactly the same as on Son of Basic R3 with the IC missing on the relay uh, responsible for RF and the connectivity module is using CC2530 Zigbee module. To separate the boards I'm going to be brutal and cut the 8 pins that are used to attach to boards. Now these are slightly more narrow than the GPRO headers available on Raspberry Pi so if you want to replace them unfortunately you will have to get a different ones. This is ESP8285 module. You can see the jumper to switch the DIY mode. At the back, you have the access to the dev pads, and those are the same pitch as the GPIO on Raspberry Pi. These are the usual 3.3 volts ground RX and TX. The RF version of the connectivity board is exactly the same, so you'll notice the same pin layout, the same ESP8285, and there isn't anything that really changes on this board. I believe they use the same one for both Sonofs. Zigbee version is the interesting one. You'll see the CC2530 chip and five different dev pads, uh, one data, one clock, 3.3 volt, ground and reset. That indicates that actually to connect to this board, you're gonna use I2C interface. Since the modules are apart, I've decided to add the female header to my connectivity module so I could easily connect a sensor or buttons etc. Now the pitch for those dev pads is exactly the same as on, as on the Raspberry Pi so there wasn't a problem but I knew exactly I would have a problem creating headers for the connectivity module and the relay itself because those are much narrower so I don't have any headers and I ended up just cutting all the pins and resoldering everything manually which is slightly tedious. Despite them looking almost identical, there is a bit of a difference between the modules itself. The relay part of it a virus between the Wi-Fi and RF versions and Zigbee obviously comes with a different interface altogether, which is quite interesting. In the next video, I'm going to definitely focus on the Zigbee one and I'll talk about integrations and what you can do with the I2C interface. If you're interested in the close-up pictures, head to the description of this video and you'll find a link to article explaining everything in detail. 
Now, I do not have a posting schedule, so if you want to keep in touch and know when there is a new article or video available, you can use the YouTube, but it's best to follow me on social media because I always post when the new content is out. So if you do so, I'll be very, very thankful. As for now, guys, thanks so much for watching, and I'm definitely going to see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.